Hey guys, memory games have been proven to improve brain functions such as concentration, attention, focus, and give rise to increase in critical thinking skills. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a memory game using Python and Pygame. Before I show you how to code the application, I'm going to show you a quick demonstration of how the game works. So all we have to do is enter Python and then the file name and then a pygame window pops up and then we can see for a one second all the tiles in the game board are displayed so that the user has a better idea of the, each tile's position so that they can match each tile with its corresponding tile uh, once the all the tiles are covered up so the goal of the game is to match as all the tiles on the game board so that the user can uh, progress to the next level so I'll show you a quick run of the game. As you see, when a tile matches, as in this case, the score is incremented by 10. Oh, we can match this. And uh, we have two more matches. Okay, so I should do it. And there we go. So now when the game ends, we can see this animation being displayed for the game end scenario. <laughs> now notice uh, for the level two, we have a different size board. So what we did was we added one extra column and then one extra row to make the difficulty level harder uh, as is it's um, the next level so once again we have the game board displaying uh, all the tiles for one second so that the user can memorize them and then uh, we have the same procedure being repeated where we have to match all the tiles with its corresponding pair to in order to advance to the next level okay so i won't go through the uh, work of I'm going to level three as i think uh, i want to keep this video short so i'll leave it up to you guys and uh so just know that for each level uh a new row and a column is being added so that the game continually increases in difficulty as each level progresses okay i've also added a pause game functionality to this game so where uh, upon pressing the escape key, we're presented with a pause game menu uh, and we have two options. So we could either resume the gameplay or we could either quit or in which we quit the game. Okay, so now let's go over the code for this application. First, we can see that we have to import uh, Pygame and then Pygame menu uh, as these will be the main libraries that will help us build this game. And we also need random and sys libraries. Now we have the diamond asset path. So these asset path dictionaries are some key value pairs uh, objects that uh, hold the value of the file path that contains uh, each of these uh, sprites that you saw in the demonstration. So for example, uh, you, there's five shapes in total with seven different colors. So there's um, each shape of each color is sorted into a different PNG file and each uh, file is organized with its corresponding group. So you have the blue, green, gray, red, tan, teal, yellow uh, colors organized along with it, each um, shape. So diamond, hexagon, octagon, square, triangle, and for each uh, color. So what these uh, asset path dictionaries do is that they reference the exact file path for each uh, object, so for each color and of each shape. So that's what these uh, asset path dictionaries do. So now let's go on to uh, frames per second variable. So this is the frames per second variable. It uh, gives the general uh, speed of the game. Uh, currently it's set to 30, so it's not 
too fast but not too slow and then we have the window width so the width would be the uh, width of the game screen we just saw so when the pi game window appears this is uh, 640 uh, w uh, wide and then the height being 480 which should be 480 wide uh, tall and we have the reveal speed so the reveal speed is the speed in which that cover uh, opens and how it closes so the speed in which it close opens and closes is the reveal speed now we have the uh, box size um, variable so the box size variable would be uh, the pixel uh, size of each box the gap size would be the gaps in which this uh, grid layout is uh, formed and we have the board width and height of four and three. So we can see here uh, the width of four. So four columns, three rows, 12 tiles in total. So 12 different options with um, matching objects. Next, we have the game score variable. So the score variables uh, matches to a uh, game store uh, variable. And uh, we have the game level variable matching to this game level text. And we have the game paused uh, Boolean uh, variable, uh, which call, uh, controls the state of the game, checks whether if it's false or um, true for a game pause. Next, we have the gray, navy, blue, white colors. Um, these are colors are used extensively throughout the game. As you see, the backgrounds are navy blue. Uh, the uh, boxes are white and the on hover effects of the uh, blue highlighting is uh, the blue color so moving on we can see uh, square diamond hexagon octagon triangle so five different shapes and then we have uh, seven different colors so there's uh, so five times seven 37 different um, tile combinations possible and uh, what these two sets do is that they encapsulate these variables. So you have seven different uh, colors uh, being encapsulated in the colors variable and the shapes variable for the shapes. And these are used to uh, fetch all the uh, paths uh, in the asset path uh, key value objects. So we'll see this in more greater detail as we move on. Next, we come across our first function in the game. Uh, we have our board width a level up function uh, controlling the level up scenario for the game. So when the user matches all the tiles in the game, uh, this function is being called and we're using the global uh, variables board width and board height, incrementing them by one, uh, thereby adding a column and a row in order to increase the difficulty of the game. Next, we have the draw diamond sprite function. And what it does is it instantiates a gem object and uh, using the diamond image, using the diamond asset path uh, while passing in the color. So the color will be passed in for main and in diamond asset path, it'll look for, for example, if you say the color is blue, uh, then it'll look for the blue diamond contained in this um, asset folders path it'll see blue diamond uh, and it'll fetch that path so once the path is fetched it is loaded as an image to pi game uh, convert alpha and then we're going to scale that image to match whatever the width and height of these um, uh, sprite should be so this all these sprites have to be a specific size uh, so the transform.scale function controls uh, the resizing of these sprites once the image is loaded and appropriately scaled it is then passed into the diamond um, the gem, gem uh, class uh, I'll cover this class uh, this uh, definition very soon and uh, we have it's passing in the position, so the left and top positions, and the actual sprite that the gem has to be represented by. Then we uh, draw the diamond uh, using the display surf main window variable. 
Um, so first of all, let's go across, uh, let's go over the gem um, class. So gem is a uh, Python sprite class and it has a constructor taking in the position argument and the image argument as we see here. This is the position argument and this is the image. It takes in the image, gets a rect object, uh, centers that rect object using the position uh, tuple values obtained from its parameters. And then for its draw method, uh, it calls the blit uh, method in order to draw that uh, object onto the main window. The screen argument is represented by the display surf um, variable. And if you're wondering what display surf is, if we navigate to main, we can see uh, global display surf. Uh, display surf is the Pygame uh, main window. Uh, using the uh, window width and height uh, variable values to create the main window. Okay, so now that is how the diamond sprite is created. And these sprites are then uh, used by the application to, you know, insert them onto the game board. So a similar process occurs for hexagon, octagon, square, and triangle. It's just that the uh, variable names have been changed in order to match the appropriate uh, asset path key value object. So that's it for this video. Uh, I wanted to keep this video short, so uh, I'll go. So I went over, you know, the game variables and some of the helper functions. In the next video, I'll be going over the functions that make the reveal gem uh, functionality possible, and also the cover gem, as you saw there, and also the game pause functionality, along with the matching gem functionality. <clears throat> along with the um, score functionality and uh, various other aspects of the game. So please stay tuned to that. And um, I hope you learned a lot from this video. Thanks so much for watching. Please make sure to like and subscribe. And uh, please make sure to leave a comment if you uh, have any feedback or uh, any criticisms or concerns. Uh, thanks again and uh, have a great day. Bye.